And right now we'd like to talk about conic sections. Pretty much any conic section could be defined by the polynomial ax squared plus by squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus uh, constant value c such that that whole sum will give you zero. Now of course a, b, g, f, and c can be any real number you like uh, including negative numbers. And um, there are certain conditions under which you get certain conic sections for certain values of uh, these coefficients. For example, if a, b is greater than zero, then you can say it's an ellipse, and uh, actually graphing it will bear it out. If a, b equals zero, then it's a parabola. That means that either x squared or y squared has a coefficient on it of zero. We don't want a and b to both be zero, but one of them has to be zero. So um, now if a, b is less than zero, uh, in other words, if either a or b are, happen to be negative, then we have a hyperbola. If a equals b, if a and b are equal to each other, then we have a circle of a certain radius. So that's a little bit important. We'll be able to just stick that in a box. So one thing we're going to look at is, suppose given the curve 4x squared plus 9y squared minus 8x plus 36y plus 4 equals 0, first of all, identify the conic section. Like which conic section would this be an equation of? Secondly, whichever one it is, convert it to the standard form for that conic section. And lastly, state the parent. So we see that a equals 4 and b equals 9. a and b are not equal to each other, so that rules out a circle. We also have 4 times 9 is 36. 36 is greater than 0, so then we conclude it's an ellipse. Now, in order to convert to standard form, uh, you have to complete the square. But it's a little bit more than that because there's actually two squares to complete. There's a square in terms of y and another square in terms of x. So both of those have to be completed separately. So I have here 4x squared minus 8x plus 4, and we can consider that to be a perfect square trinomial. In fact, just for completeness, we'll factor out the 4. And as for the 9y squared plus 36, you can factor out the 9, because 9 goes into 36 and 9. And you end up with y squared plus 4y. Well, we've already completed the first square in terms of x. x squared minus 2x plus 1 is just x minus 1 quantity squared. You can check that by expansion. Now, to complete the square for x oh, y squared plus 4y, we add 4. But in order to do that, we have to take away 4. But wait a minute. The 4 is inside a bracket, which is multiplied by 9. So we really have to take away 4 times 9. And um, the way I've done it, because uh, we're working across the equal sign, rather than taking away from the same side of the equation, I add it to opposite sides of the equation. So I added 36 to one side because of 9 times 4. Now I have to add 36 to the other side of the equal sign uh, for the same reason, just to balance the equation, just to keep the equality alive. So we have 4x minus 1 quantity squared plus 9y plus 2 quantity squared equals 36. If we divide everything by 6, that means um, y plus 2 all squared is divided by 4. If we divide by 9, that means x minus 1 squared is divided by 9. Um, and 36, well, 36 divided by 9 times 4, or 4 times 9, is going to be 1, because it ends up being 36 divided by 36. Now that's in standard form. Uh, so we'll put that in a box. And finally, we show to you the parent function.